Welcome back, Awaken Intuitives, and welcome to any new Awakened or Awakening Intuitives. Natalie here. I am back to do a part three on Middle Earth, and um, it has been so good. I've been super, super happy with it. And so if you are interested and want to know a little bit more about the history of Middle Earth that we know of and things like that, it is in part one. It is time stamped, and I read you the information and all that. And uh, most of my questions, a lot of them come from that information that I do read. And so um, I hope you're interested in wanting to know more about Middle Earth um, as I am because I am personally a believer in many things like this. Um, you don't have to be, but this is a place for open minds and I believe open minds only. And uh, you do what you want, but the truth is always stranger than fiction. Um, all of this information is for entertainment purposes only. And um, thank you for being here. Um, I did get some things from Crystal Medicine. I just need to show you. I am amazed by her talent. And if you are interested in um, her things, um, her channel will be linked in the description below, Crystal Medicine. Um, she has given me this bracelet. It is very, very pretty. Let's see if I can show you more of the color. And then she did make this necklace. There's rose quartz in there. Um, she gave me this beautiful little owl. It's amazing. Um, she's made these little incense bags and her name's on here. And this one is Potpourri Lavender Essential Oil, Natural Dried White Sage, Sweetgrass, Palo Santo, Lavender Calendula, um, Rosemary, uh, all sorts of stuff. But look how beautiful. So if you're interested, check her out. Her jewelry, um, I should have brought more out, is amazing in the energy that's in them. Um, I will buy the rest of my um, crystal medicine jewelry, crystal jewelry from her. So check her out, amazing. So um, we are gonna begin with the prayer. This will be time stand. We're gonna do the singing bowl and then we're gonna begin the read. Um, I have this book that I've read. It's called Prism of Lyra. Exploration of Human Galactic Heritage by Lisa Royal Holt. This is amazing. This will be linked in the description below as well if you are interested. It's awesome. I brought my crystal skull out here, my moss agate crystal skull. I started bringing this out in the very, very beginning of, um, was it part? Yeah, it was part one of Middle Earth. For some reason, I just had a feeling to bring it out. Um, and I'm so glad I did. There was a reason. Um, I do have some deep healing energy music playing. I do not own the rights to it. And so let's begin with a prayer. Bowl then read. So let's do 3.30. Okay, here we go. Divine Source, thank you for us all being here. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for filling us with your beautiful, amazing, powerful, white light. Thank you for providing us each with a path and direction of where to go, how to go, being our authentic selves, reminding us to be that. Thank you for the light workers coming together and speaking up, giving us all the courage and the abilities. Thank you for providing each of us with our own unique abilities and tools and intuition. Thank you for all the signs and synchronicities and the guidance, protection, and safety. I ask that you'll guide me through these questions. Guide me through the cards. Guide me through my abilities and tools in the ways that I could use them for us to gain clarity and wisdom and knowledge. Please help us all remember to be mindful, aware, open-minded, very intuitive, um, as much as we possibly can to transform, to grow, um, to learn. And I, I ask that you enhance our abilities and tools when we need them to gain that clarity, knowledge, and wisdom. Um, I do ask that you will provide us all with our ancestors of the light only and protectors to help guide us and protect us and our loved ones. 
I ask for protection, guidance, and safety for me and my family and everybody who's watching for all of our inner and outer lives against anything negative, evil, or unholy in any way, shape, or form, no matter what it is. I ask that you'll cut, detach, or block any ties, cords, attachments, attacks, accusations, judgments, hidden agendas, negativity in any way, shape, or form and send them right back to their source immediately from this moment onward. I thank you for surrounding us with a blanket of your light. I ask for the continuance of that, for sympathy, empathy, uh, self-love, unconditional love, understanding, acknowledgement, honesty, respect, and care for ourselves and for others, no matter what. And I thank you for us all being here. Please help bring honesty, clarity, and answers in for us to grow in the best way possible. And in all my relations, so be it. Okay. Woo! Heavy. Let's do our singing bowl. Okay, this is to cleanse out any lower vibrations or frequencies, if any, and bring in the higher vibrations and frequencies. Helps us connect to higher vibrational, higher frequencies. So we're gonna ding it twice, then we will sing it. Three, two, one. All right, uh, this is a Tibetan brass singing bowl. It's amazing. Um, they have little smaller ones. I think they have a bigger ones. Um, uh, I do have some sage going, Palo Santo, some resin going, um, and my sandalwood incense may be going. <laughs> We're gonna pull a blessing card here in a second and begin our reading. Um, I will list um, some websites um, in the description below so you can check out some of these things uh, pretty amazing and it makes you qu wonder it makes you think and question I believe that if you don't have an open mind um, let me okay if we don't have an open mind I feel like we don't grow or learn anything honestly with anything it doesn't matter what it is okay uh, we're learning about new things every single day right so I believe our lives are entirely all about growth and learning. And um, so there's that. Um, and I believe that it's important as well to question everything, okay? I always have, <laughs> ever since I could remember, okay? So let's begin with the blessing card. And we'll use the angel wisdom. All these decks will be listed in the description below if you're interested. And... Uh, that's to knock out any possible previous energy left behind. Um, I call these our archangel cards though. Can we get a blessing card for part three of Middle Earth? Source, divine, commitment. Okay, commitment. Angel wisdom reminds you that when you aim for a vision without doubt or deviation, it must succeed. Your angel guidance is to persevere towards your vision. Let every thought, word, and action be directed towards your desired outcome. We just had that full moon last night for me anyway. Um, nothing is more powerful than focus energy and the angels will see the pure light of your commitment. Hmm. Whether it is to re a relationship, a piece of work, a journey, or anything else in your life. Remember to ask them for help and know when you de dedicate your intention to the highest good, they will support you. Affirmation, I am committed to my vision. I most definitely am. Okay. Let's pull a Shaman Wisdom Oracle as well. If you're interested in the full moon uh, reading, um, I have them by all of our sun signs if you wanna check those out. 
I also did the Lionsgate portal. Okay. I did Mount Shasta. Those will be linked in the description below for you as well if you want to check out the Mount Shasta ones. Okay, can we get a Shaman Wisdom Oracle for part three of Middle Earth? Wow, we have a number 28, okay? I was born on January 28th. I was born at 10.28 p.m. Eights have always been very important in my life, uh, super strong. Uh, a lot of my families are born on eights and things like that. And I did get my eight-pointed star. Um, it's just really cool. Anyway, so it is sweet grass. All right, sweet grass. Um, it cleanses out negativity, uh, things like that. Let's put some more uh, resin on here just so we got that going. And it also says, Feminine North Sun Air. So Middle Earth, I was talking about, and we kept getting the central sun. Okay, I am Sweetgrass. I travel to the Great Spirit. Okay, this is super cool. Father Sky. I call in all that is good. I am your guardian. Use me to expand your abilities to communicate your intentions to others. My sweet smoke elevates you from the physical to the spiritual, from the profane to the sacred, from the physical to the spiritual. So it's like middle earth, outer earth. Okay. Um, from the profane to the sacred, from the ordinary to the exceptional, my pleasant aroma relieves stress and reduces anxiety. I am aromas. I am dreams. If any of you have ever had dreams of another type of world um let me know in the comments because i've always had dreams of other type of worlds that are avatar like and just uh, many of them i've always dreamt of them dreamt of them okay so now we're gonna begin where we left off i okay we left off at number 31 we were talking about admiral Richard Bird. Um, that is going to be in part one in my information read about him, okay? So, let's start off with the Millennium Thoth. Oops, making messes here. Okay. Last night we had the coolest lightning and thunderstorm. It was monsoon. Um, it came up into uh, northeastern Utah. It was so cool. So cool. All right. So the question we asked was, did Richard Bird, he wrote in his private journal about ex his experiences of inner earth and the openings he flew over and if his accounts were true. And I got a yes. So did he really get pictures of these openings? Did this Admiral Richard Bird get pictures of these openings to Middle Earth? Can I just get one, please? Oh, come on. Did he really get pictures? Wow. We have the Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles, Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Earthly, okay? He is a dark horse. He always finishes the race. And it may be a business type offer, some kind of opportunity or offer, something tangible. It could be earthly. Um, wow, he has these like elk type antlers and he's holding this big shield on this black horse. And uh, he may leave breadcrumbs, which to me, that would be like pictures. So I believe he does have pictures or did get pictures. Okay. Um, did he meet any of their inhabitants of Middle Earth? Did he meet any of their inhabitants of Middle Earth? Any of the inhabitants of Middle Earth? Yeah. We have Wheel of Fortune. Okay. So that's a number 10. This is fulfillment completion. Um, uh, turning the wheel turning cycles um fate destiny 
uh, there's a central sun in the middle of this wheel. Yeah, there's an alligator, a monkey, and um, the sphinx. Look at that, yes. Yeah. Okay, um, did he go inside of these openings? Yeah, at least twice. We have the lovers. This is two energies, two cups, two energies mixing well. It could be a relationship. Yes, there's a lion and then there's an eagle. I, I think he did at least two times. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. Let's get another deck. Line Strider Mini Tarot. Was Bird questioned heavily about his experiences by the top, top notch, top of the line, top of the pyramid? Okay, was he questioned heavily about his experiences when he got back? Because it is said he was. We got the sun and the Ten of Cups. Wow. Okay, the sun's a huge yes, okay? A huge yes. And the Ten of Cups is your most emotional, happy, comfortable life. It can be home, family, structure, stability. Wow, it, Cups can be Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, water, feelings, and emotions. That to me is a big yes, and possibly about, um, even about the the foundations, uh, the structures down there, uh, the families, the communities down there. Okay, wow. Um, was he told to keep quiet like it said? Knight of Pentacles, again, that dark horse. Was he told to keep quiet? Oh my gosh, he was very determined. That's why he wrote in his journal. Okay, he, it didn't matter. He was very determined. He's that dark horse. He always finishes the race. And may leave breadcrumbs. Okay, um, let's move on. We have a lot of questions. Did bird fly into one of these openings? Fly. Five of wands. That is struggles, battles fighting, arguing, fire, passion, action, took action, but it was a battle, took action, but it was a battle. And then I say, if so, he, if so, could he see sky inside of this, the sky? Yes, he's seen sky inside of one of these openings. Ace of Swords. This is absolute truth and clarity and justice. Truth Sword. Yeah. Wow. And then I asked, if not, did he feel called to take the chance to wreck? Because obviously he's seen the sky. Okay. So, well, this is what that says. And I believe it. Again, all this information is for entertainment purposes only. So, this Norwegian sailor, Olaf Jansen. He was another person that supposedly went into the opening of inner earth and went inside um, back in, I think the 1700s or something like that. So this Norwegian sailor, Olaf Jansen, was he a real person? Was he a real person? Yes, we have the emperor. This is a male influence, a leader. He did have his little crew. Okay, this is Aries energy, fire, passion, action. He holds the chess piece. He holds the key. He's a leader, a guider, um, the divine masculine, a male influence. Yep, that's a yes. We're getting a lot of major arcanas already. Yeah, that's a big yes. Let's change decks. Crystal visions. Okay, did 
Did him and his crew find an opening to inner earth, middle earth? Like it is said. Oops, look. The emperor. That to me is a big yes. Huge yes. Did he really live in inner earth for two years like he claims? Queen of Wands and Six of Cups. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, Queen of Wands, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, Energy. Remember this Aries, Aries, Fire. He may be an Aries um, or a Fire sign. Uh, she reclaims her power. She gets self-recognition. She has confidence. Uh, she takes action. She has very strong will. And then we have the Six of Cups, which is Memories making memories having memories older memories childhood something or somebody you've known for a long time wow yeah he did wow that's amazing that is amazing okay Let's move on. If so, why did he come back to the surface? Why did he come back to the surface? Nine of cups. Okay. A wish heard to the universe. Uh, feelings, emotions, uh, single energy, uh, hard work, um, almost at your full ten of cups, um, all your happy, emotional, um, comfortable life. Um, it could be overindulgence. Um, could have stayed there a little too long. So I think there's something he wanted to share to the world. sharing his experiences um and i think he stayed there a little too long okay was he told to go to the surface oops was he told to go back to the surface eight of cups yep yep okay um at least if not told you just chose to walk out of there we have eight of cups this is walking away um leaving behind something was he told to share his experiences was he told to share his experiences death death rebirth changes transformation Endings and beginnings. I believe he was told that him down there is it's time to go back. Um, there's the uh, key to life, the ink, um, and there's butterflies for transformation. His time down there needed to end. So I I want to know, was he willing to uh, share his story to the world? Was he willing to share his story to the world? Three of Pentacles. Yep. This is cooperation, commitment, contracts, um, three energies, teamwork. Um, Pentacles is tangible things, uh, earthly, three energies. So there's some kind of commitment, cooperation, contracts, and teamwork. Did he like make a contract with the inner earth people? Let's get another deck. And three is communication, transportation, and journeys. We have hangman and justice on the bottom. Okay. Did he have like some kind of contract with these inner earth people? Working with them, cooperation, teamwork. Oh my gosh. We have the world. Number 21, three. Again, communication, transportation, journeys. 
The world is travel. It is endings and beginnings, fulfillment, completion, cycles. Wow. She's inside of that circle too. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. All right, let's move on. Um, these openings, are they portals? Are these openings portals? All of them? Are all these openings portals? The moon. Look at all these major arcanas we're getting. The moon is Pisces energy. And number 18, that adds up to a nine. Wish her to the universe. Higher learning, spirituality, faith, higher education. Um, the moon is unknown unseen she's under the water under the moon oh, and it can be secrets lies um maternal um the subconscious but it is a whole nother world underneath the water i think they are freaking portals there's a full moon Wow. Okay. Okay, if so, if these are all portals, at least most of them. Um, so is Middle Earth a whole nother dimension then? Okay, we have Page of Pentacles. This is something new and offer a message and opportunity. And okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Daughter got hurt. <laughs> okay, we have Page of Pentacles. So this is a tangible thing, an earth sign. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. She's on earth. She's in a circle. She's holding a pentacle. It's cir circular. So that reminds me of a portal, okay? So I believe they are a lot of another, at least another dimension, at least one other dimension to the inner middle earth. But you know what? I want to pull an oracle and ask the same question and see what we get. Let's do, oh, um, let's do gateway of light activation. Are, okay, where am I? Okay, are these openings to Middle Earth a different dimension? Are these openings to Middle Earth to another dimension? Wow, we have halls of learning, spirit guides, confirmation. Yep. Great lessons. It says right there, confirmation. Okay, now, with the capital city of Middle Earth, is it the original Garden of Eden, like it is said? So, let's do another oracle, but we're gonna do Beyond Lemuria. Is the capital of Middle Earth the original Garden of Eden, like it is said, like it is said. Mm -hmm. The original Garden of Eden, is that the capital of Middle Earth, the Garden of Eden, original? We got this yesterday, High Heart Chakra, okay? It's a number six, that's health, wellness, daily routines, and boundaries. And it says ecstatic bliss. I don't know if it's really the Garden of Eden. I think maybe it's like a Garden of Eden. Let's read this out of the guidebook. Okay, birdie, just get the kitty food and go. Come on, a little loud. Yeah, we got this in uh, part two. Okay, ecstatic bliss, divine love, selflessness, spiritual compassion, oneness through heart-centered bliss, healing, gratitude, giving love, dharma, patience, joy. 
This card taps into the blissful oneness we feel as we drop away our edges in protective containers. This is the place where we feel held and seen, enough to flow into oneness where the eternal part of me meets the eternal part of you. Okay! Get the cat food! And go! <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Um, this is a selfless state where our higher selves commune for illuminated perspective on how we share, gift, and lift others in our joyful overflow. Um, consider your life purpose by exploring what allows you to give in joy, the ways you can bring joy to yourself and others, the thymus gland behind your sternum a little above the heart, iridescent pink. Let's pull a tarot on that. Mom, yeah. Oh, we'll fix it, okay? okay? All right, I'll fix it after this. I would put it on the counter but in a safe spot. Thank you. Okay, let's ask this with a tarot card. Is the capital city of Miner Middle, Middle Earth um, the original Garden of Eden? Is the capital city of Middle Earth the original Garden of Eden, please? There we go. Okay, yes. And with this high heart chakra, it was talking about the selflessness, this loving, compassion place of joy. And that's what a Garden of Eden would be, right? Yeah. So the magician is the number one. You're gonna have to come back, okay? And uh, I'll, sh I'll show after this, okay? I'll show after this for sure. But this is a number one, that's a yes for me. The magician is um, manifesting, creating magic. This is the um, godmother, okay? Waving her wand. So yes, it is, it is. Okay, cool. That's amazing. All right, and then, Sharula Dukes, Dukes, Sharula Dukes. She's a person I'm gonna do reading just on her only, okay? Is she really from Telos, which is inside Earth, a city underneath the Earth, in the Middle Earth? Shirula Dukes, is she from Telos like she claims? This Shirula Dukes. Seven of Wands and Three of Swords, okay? Seven of Wands is triumph, standing up for your beliefs. She said that she was sent up to the surface to share her knowledge, her story, things like that, okay? So that would make sense with triumph, standing up for your beliefs and things like that. And then uh, we have three of swords. So a three, swords is words, communicating three different ways to the world. Uh, three of swords can be heartbreak, three swords in the heart, betrayal, things like that. Um, the lightning striking. I want to read these two out of the guidebook, though. Um, okay, here we go. It is so hot. Seven of Wands. It is John Henry, Alabama, American folktale. The Seven of Wands represents an indomitable force against all odds. John Henry stands up for what he believes in and is willing to fight to the bitter end. His courage and resolve is an inspiration even to those who disagree with him. Endurance, attack, fighting for beliefs, perseverance, mounting a defense. Telos is said to be underneath Mount Shasta. Okay, let's find the three swords. It is the Crane Wife, Japan, Japanese fairy tale. The three swords represent betrayal. The crane wife asks her husband for privacy. And she, she's said to have a husband that she lives with on Mount Shasta, near Mount Shasta. Wow. Um, for her privacy. But he spies on her only to discover she was hurting herself to help him. His spying was treacherous, but so was her inability to trust him with her secret. Oh, secret. Okay. Um, Heartbreak, self-harm, sadness, grief, separation. She was said to separate from Telos. Okay. She said she was born in 1725 in Telos. Is that true? Is it true she was born in 1725? 
that would be the year on the surface. We have nine of wands. Okay, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, energy, fire, passion, action. And uh, nine of wands is taking an action to build up a wall to protect how far you've come, worried about others coming in and breaking down your wall um, or taking things from you. It's, it's an action. Um, let's read this one out of the guidebook. Hmm. I'm not sure. The Vis Vasilisa the Beautiful, Russia, Russian fairy tale. <clears throat> the Nine of Wands represents weathering the battle sent by her wicked stepmother to the door of the witch Baba Yaga. Vasilisa the Beautiful stays resilient. She endures Baba Yaga's impossible trials. She is wary and cautious, but also hopeful. Fatigue, pers persistence, gathering strength, wounds, and resilience. Hmm. Okay, let's move on. Because I'm going to want to do reading just on her only later. Telos is said to be a Lemurian. Lemurian. Sorry. Telos is said to be a Lemurian city. Is that true? Telos. Is Telos a Lemurian city? Now we have a 10 of swords. 10 can be a no for me. Swords is, of course, Gemini, Libra, energy, air, uh, words, communication. 10 of swords is betrayal. It's betrayal. 10 swords in the back. Let's find that one. I don't know. Okay. Sedna, Canada, Inuit mythology. The 10 of swords represents backstabbing and betrayal. Sedna's father pushes her from his kayak and chops off her fingers. And when she tries to cling to his boat, she sinks to the bottom of the ocean and becomes consumed with wrath, eternally seeking revenge. Bottom of the ocean. Bitterness, betrayal, rock bottom, martyrdom, severing ties. Maybe it used to be. Oh my gosh. Maybe there was some kind of betrayal. Is, is, has it changed? Is um, Telos a city of something else now? Is Telos a city of something else now? Is Telos a city of something else now? Yeah, I think there's at least three different like uh, races or something of Telos because we have this three of coins, this three of pentacles, this cooperation, commitment, contracts, teamwork. Okay, it may have it, it may have used to been just Lemurians. Did it used to be just Lemurians? Nine of coins, single independent. Yes, yes, just Lemurians there. Single independent energy. Okay. All right. Um, does it exist right now? Does Telos exist right now? Even though it's in a different dimension. Does Telos exist right now? Does Telos exist right now? Yes. The world and the tower. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, ah, so the world is the world, right? Um, it's travel. It is fulfillment completion. Number 21 communication, uh, for three, sorry, reducing 21 to a three, adding them together, whatever communication, transportation, and journeys. Okay. And then we have the tower. This is like upheaval or lightning striking, crumbling of the foundation, nothing will ever be the same. Um, there may have been some kind of tower moment there. Let's ask. There's the world. And the tower. Did, did something happen in Telos? This tower, did something happen there? Did something happen in Telos for like a tower moment?
another deck. Magical Nordic Tarot. Did something happen in Telos? Like this tower moment? Four of Pentacles. Wow. And on here it says stability. Something happened with their foundation, the stability. Was there like a battle or something in Telos? Was there some kind of like battle or something in Telos? Um, it's underneath Mount Shasta. It said, okay, in my Mount Shasta readings, I got that there were cleaning some things out from some, some dark ones. So did a battle happen in Telos? Nine of Pentacles, again, that single independent energy. It says on here, gratitude. Um, it is the money maker of the home, the breadwinner of the home. I want to read this one out of the guidebook. Oh, that's cups. It is so hot. Keywords, prosperity, generosity, acknowledgement, home life. Something happened with their home. Okay. Um, so let's ask if there was like a battle, a war, uh, was there a battle or a war again? Sorry. Was there a battle or a war in Telos? Was there like a battle or a war in Telos, please? Okay, we have the High Priestess, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Energy. I believe there was. She who sees but doesn't speak. Uh, she holds the information. She holds the key. She holds the knowledge. Um, she has psychic visions. She can channel. She can download. Let's read her. She's a number two of the Major Arcana. And two is an earthly thing. Tangible things. Um... So it's a Nordic God, the Nordic gods and goddesses would often wear clothing made from feathers or fur, believing it would help them take on the characteristics of the animals. Uh, the high priestess sits at a table with the precious stones and a crystal ball before her. Her hair is crimson red, eyes bright blue, and she is wearing a black cloak adorned with teal feathers. An eagle representing her spiritual power sits on her shoulder. It could have been a spiritual war. And I was just talking about the spiritual war. I believe in a spiritual war. I believe in a mass awakening. All this information is for entertainment purposes only. Okay, and look, what did they do back in the day? They had a table with these little figures on there for battles and wars, right? For their ships and stuff. And, okay, so, let's see. Sits on her shoulder while two cats, one black, one white, her familiar sit on either side of her. Maybe two different, just like what I was saying the dark ones and the good ones, black and white. There was a spiritual war. Okay. Uh, with her familiar sit on either side of her, there is a full moon and sky full of stars in the distance. A sword lies on the ground beside her with the soul of a goddess and a mind of a warrior. Warrior. Wow. She symbolizes the balance between our inner and outer power. Hmm. Spirituality, intuition, meditation, higher self healing. I'm guided by my intuition. The high priestess is the keeper of secrets. Listen to your intuition now as all that glistens around you may not be gold. Secret information will soon be revealed and what's hidden will be exposed. Privacy and discretion will be of utmost importance as secrets will be shared and loyalties may be tested. Wow. Messages from the universe are also likely. So take note of any recurring dreams or quotes you see as they could be signs. Your psychic powers will also be heightened. This card can predict a future career in healing or mediumship too. Okay. I believe there was a spiritual war that happened in Telos. And I was talking about this in my Mount Shasta readings. It wasn't, um, it, yeah, we got into it pretty deep. Okay. All right. I'm going to put this away. So now, 
does Telos come up inside of Mount Shasta, like it is said? We'll do Revelations Tarot. Are you kidding me? Any resin, please? I should. Ouch, sucker. Hurt myself. Mm. Does Telos come up in the inside of Mount Shasta, like it is said? Does Telos come up inside of Mount Shasta? Okay, here we go. I'm taking it. Ten of Pentacles. This is your most financial and emotional abundant life, your comfort, solid foundations and structures community. Then we have the Queen of Pentacles. She's the most financial material possessions abundant queen. She's Taurus Virgo Capricorn, earthly um, she is confident she'll turn down a low ball offer. There's a star on this globe. Um, the three of wands is making plans or planning. Um, it could be embarking and trading and we have judgment. Wow. Judgment is a big, huge. Yes. A judgment call made a decision, a yes card. I think it does. Their community us foundations um earthly um i want to read her out of the guidebook at least this guidebook i bought myself she is a warm hearted woman surrounded by luxury and wealth she gives from her wholesome heart for the pleasures of the body. Represents good hardness, a love for luxury, a great cook, a patron of fine clothes, and a frequenter of elegant places. She is also a friend who can be practical in times of need and supportive when the chips are down. As a lover, she is deeply sensual and is comfortable with her body. She is methodical in her business sense and pragmatic in her dealings. She budget, budgets out of practicality and perseveres through chores for the good of herself and of others. In situations, this cards her all the period of luxurious material wealth and the acquisition of beautiful things. Here, wealth that has been earned is spent as a reward or as a treat. I think it's wealthy, a wealthy type of um, place. Okay, it says the images and symbolism. The queen here is like the lesser version of the empress. She too has a world at her grasp, and she is one with nature. Hmm. And with all those around her. Mount Shasta. Okay. Her gentle and trusting gaze shows a kindness in her heart. She's flaked by two pillars of support and crowned by roses, which reflects her caring nature and natural beauty. The queen on the... Oh, we did not do the reverse. The colors is gold, green, and colors of royalty and of healing and nature. Royalty. The three wands. Oh! Embarking, planning, trading. Um... Making plans. Let's pull this one out. Effortlessly, the energies flow out of their bodies and connect with the rest of the universe. The three wants embodies the epitome of creative success. Here, the ability to bring forth new projects to completion seems effortless. All skills and talents have already been acquired with only bigger challenges to wait in the future. Um, in situations, this card foretells increased profits, new experiences, or merges with beneficial ties. In terms of career, it tells of new things coming your way and opportunities that can enhance your life. I'm making a mess all of a sudden. Images. The three sages have come together in a circle to form a vortex for creation. Yeah, vortex, portal. They channel their energies to the heavens to spread over the land. The image illustrates the level of ease with which the energy of creation flows through their bodies. Glowing scarlet and reds associated with Aries. Wow. That's a lot. I believe so, but in a different dimension. 
judgment. Big, huge yes. Okay. Um, do the ley lines of Earth, the ley lines of Earth's energy, cross at Mount Shasta? Let's do a different deck. Um, let's do the Tarot of Dreams. There's an emperor on the very bottom. Okay, do the Earth's energy ley lines cross at Mount Shasta? I see the star and the high priestess. Holy cow. Do the energies of uh, Earth's energy ley lines cross at Mount Shasta? Our smoke went out. Do Earth's energy ley lines cross at Mount Shasta, please? King of Coins. Okay, possibly. Coins is Pentacles. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Earthly. Okay. The King of Coins is the most financial material possessions abundant queen or king. Sorry. He can be about lineage. Um, he's solid. He's reliable. He's worked hard. And it shows two pillars on each side of him. I believe so. He can be a father type figure too. Okay. Um, let's pull that uh, another oracle um, and ask that same question. Do the ley lines of Earth's energy cross at Mount Shasta? Do ley lines of Earth's energy cross at Mount Shasta? Healing, yes. And it's a number 30 or three. Three is communication, transportation, journeys. Wow, okay, we have healing. That to me, I believe ley lines can be healing, okay? Um, I wanna get this out of the guidebook. And it's got all the chakra colors. Energy rebalance, balance, energetic awareness, healing yourself and others, exploring healing modalities, uh, Reiki, the chakra system, your unique and innate ability to heal, color vibration, soul sovereignty, ores, and the meridian system, aligning to the highest good and optimal health, aligning ley lines. Also, the chakras for Mount Shasta, they said that there are points of elevation on the mountain that align with like chakras, our chakras. Okay, all right, let's move on. So, all of the places I listed, like Mount Shasta, Mount Adams, Pyramids of Giza, Himalayas, etc., are they entrances to Middle Earth? Are they entrances? Pyramids of Giza, Mount Shasta, Mount Adams, Himalayas, are they entrances? To Middle Earth. Yes! We have a yes and an earth sign. Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Aces is a yes. Yes. Like I said, I'm a believer. Have an open mind. Question everything. This is all for in, uh, entertainment purposes only. Okay. Um, are they all portals? Mount Shasta, Himalayas. Are they all portals? Queen of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Energy. She's the seer. She's nurturing, motherly, earthly, Mother Earth. Um, she can channel. So they're places of channeling. I believe they are not, they might not all be portals, but they're places of channeling and possibly they could be portals, right? There's potential. Um, this free energy mentioned like Chi, Ki, Prana, Vril, and Ether. Did they come from, it's all the same thing, but did it? Did this come from, this free energy come from the inhabitants of Middle Earth? Did this uh, come from, from the inhabitants of Middle Earth? 
Four Swords. Four Swords is like recuperation, resting after battle, um, laid to rest. Four is home, family, structure, stability. They're said to be our brothers and sisters. Um, the parent type race, they said. And Swords can be words and communication. Aquarius, Gemma, Libra, energy, air. Let's get this guidebook. You know, I think it may have came from like laid to rest people, like spirits and things like that. A time of deep rest, transmutation of shadow, healing from burnout, taking a brief holiday from your reality, renewal, and self-love. Okay. All right, so does Antarctica and Arctica have any entrances to Middle Earth like it is said? Ah! One fell. Oh my gosh. We have the Five of Cups. But this Five of Cups, this bowl cup is spilling into this like little black hole and there's a white dot in the center like the central sun. Yep. Yes. Let's get um, this and let's move on. Is that why only specific people can go to the North and South Pole? Is that why only specific people um, can go to the North and South Poles? Because there's entrances to the Middle Earth. Yeah, the moon. Pisces energy. The moon is hidden, unknown, unseen. Secrets, lies, subconscious. Yep. Yes. These technology or technological builders that I talked about in my information reading part one, these technological builders that good claims, were they responsible by creating, building the first civilizations on earth? Wow, we have three wands. Wands is fire, passion, action, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. Okay, three of wands is making plans, taking action to make plans. But look, they weaved these wands together and it looks like a portal in the center. I believe they at least um, did this at least three times. It could be embarking and trading too. Wow. Okay, what about our solar system too? Because that's what they've said. We have the chariot. The cherry is cancer energy. This is full speed ahead, forward movement, taking the reins, taking control. Um, oh, that's weird. Okay. Anyway, I seen something. It, I think it was a vehicle. Um, but this is a vehicle. This is a vehicle. Forward movement. Inner warrior. I believe so. And he's wearing a star around his neck. Okay, um, does this Cooper Belt base exist in Middle Earth? Strongly, yes. Wow, I talk about this in part one as well. Cooper Belt base exists in Middle Earth. We got strength, Leo energy. Strongly, yes. Courage, um, it's a number eight. Death, rebirth, changes, transformation, endings and beginnings. Ever flow, infinity, infinity symbol. This is a strong yes. A strong yes. Wow. Okay. With the strange sounds. Honey, I got to finish, okay? I will after, okay? Um, thank you. 
With the strange sounds that have been heard from different parts of the world, I remember hearing these sounds back like 10 years ago and it was like, like throughout an entire air and everything. They sounded like dongs, bells, machinery in the air, weird, strange sounds. And they were heard all over the world. Do they come from Middle Earth? These strange sounds, did they come from Middle Earth? These strange sounds that have been heard? Okay, yeah. We have six of wands. This is self-recognition, spotlight, victory. Um, there's a butterfly for transformation changes. Let's read this one out of the guidebook. This to me is a yes. Victory, success, rising up. The sounds were rising up. Wow. From the dark and tangled branches emerges a butterfly. New life takes flight. If you're not revealing, reveling in the joy of success already, you will be soon. The Six of Wands is a card of victory, of rising up against the odds. The obstacles have been relentless, but now is not the time to look back upon them. The more pressing question is, where will you go with your new set of wings? Yeah. Okay. All right. Are there more than 120 cities underneath Earth's surface? I want to use Gateway of Light Activation Oracle. Are there more than 120 cities underneath Earth's surface? Please back. Scrub J. My mom has a pet Scrub J. She will hold her hand out with a peanut in it. And it will come and land in her hand every single time. I've had it happen. I'll have to find a video of it and post it. I'll have to remember. Remind me. <laughs> okay, are there more than 120 cities underneath Earth's surface? Wow. We have Temple of Truth. That's right. There are more than 120 freaking cities underneath Earth's surface. Then we have Third Eye Activation. Temple of Truth. Truth, throat chakra, authenticity, self-expression. Okay. And then we have that third eye activation, brow chakra, inner vision, clear seeing, truth, clear seeing, clarity. Yes, there are. Wow. This is so good. All right, let's see. We're gonna use a Starseed Oracle. Are there Avatar type trees in Middle Earth. I've had dreams of these trees flying onto them, going inside of them. Are there avatar type trees that go into Middle Earth? We have messenger and jump in. Was my dream a message of that? Oh my gosh. So messenger, serious energy, bringing harmony and balance. What is harmony and balance in the tarot? The justice card, truth, karma, balance, okay? And then we have Jump In, Andromedan Energy, My and Dark Crystal. I've shared this in Mount Shasta. Greetings. This one is the Andromedan and Dark Crystal. Okay, that's mine. Adventure. And then say yes to change. So we have a yes and we have the balance, harmony. Yeah. Wow. They do. Wow, she's jumping into another world. It's a whole nother world. Ah, don't fall. Okay, um, are the people beings there bigger than us? Much bigger than us because it is said so. Um, let's do the line strider tarot and then we'll do an oracle. If we need to or if I feel like we need to after this. Are the people there bigger than us? Like it is said. 
Six of Cups. That is childhood, childhood memories. Um, your past, something or somebody you've known for a long time. Um, don't let your past hold you back. And, okay, so I wrote down, do they, are the people beings their bigger giants in parentheses? Okay. We've heard of giants in the Bible. Okay, in the past. I believe so. Let's pull an oracle. Are the people beings their bigger giants in Middle Earth? The infinite, infinite, big, <laughs> number 49, adds up to 13, which reduces or adds up to a four. Home, family, structure, stability, a solid foundation, the structure, justice, the infinite. That to me is a yes. Let's read that. It says the eternal life, four cycles of growth. <gasps> Growth. Yeah. Okay. Rising from the ashes, many, many deaths and rebirths within one's life. You are so much more than your physical body. No way. Hopefully it's not backwards. Yeah, they are. They're big. Tall. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right, fly, get out of here. Okay, do they live a lot longer than us, like it is said? I want to do the Sacred Earth Oracle. Do they live a lot longer than us on the surface? Do they live a lot longer than us on the surface? Nothing. Ready but waiting. Yeah! Ready but waiting. Waiting a long time. Yeah! Let's get that guidebook out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. R, R, R. There is no rush. Bide your time and be ready to act. Observe and build your stores of knowledge, energy, and resources. Resist being goaded to act before you are ready. You have not missed your chance. Prepare and be poised for an opportunity. Confidence is not being certain of success. It is being prepared to give something your best shot. That's a huge yes for me, big time. They do. Okay. Um, do they use hydroponic systems to grow food? Let me use tarot. Did we use this one yet? I can't remember. I think in the beginning. Do they use hydroponic systems to grow food? five of inspiration which is five of wands this says changes challenges um struggles fighting arguing battles wars um let's get the guidebook i don't know if they use all hydroponic systems it might be the majority they may have changed it because we have a five inspiration inspiration Rivalry challenges comparisonist, comparison it is a need to collaborate in fighting or trying to outdo one another friendly competition. Okay. Um, is most of what they grow from hydroponics? Is it is it mostly hydroponics?
Is it mostly? Hydroponics. Seven of Inspiration. And, oh, the Queen of Voices, which is the Queen of Swords. I think it's mostly hydroponics. Because the seven of inspiration can be defensiveness or triumph or standing up for yourself, building up a bubble. There's a star hanging over her. Wow. And then the queen of voices, which is the queen of swords, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra energy. She's all about truth and balance and justice. I think they have a couple of different ways. Um, but I think their most... Um, they prefer hydroponics. Okay. Do these Agarthans leave their body at will when they feel their incarnation is complete? This is what was said. Um... Where did that go? Okay, let's do the easy tarot. These Agarthans are supposed to be from Middle Earth, okay? So, do these Agarthans leave their body at will when they feel their incarnation is complete? Like it is said. Do they leave their body at will when they feel their incarnation is complete? The hangman, which is a whole new perspective, looking at things differently. He at will, he is hanging at will. This hangman is always hanging at will. It can be limbo and sacrifice. There's a sun above him as well. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. Is there less gravity there? I would think so. And I'm a believer. Again, all this information is for entertainment purposes only. Is there less gravity in Middle Earth? Is there less gravity in Middle Earth? Four Swords. Four Swords is that laid to rest, recuperation after battle resting there's three swords above him and one sword underneath him let's read this out of the guidebook oh should it go backwards oh i forgot okay we need to find four no oh this is so weird Okay, let's read this. Okay. A knight rests upon his bed. The brick wall behind him shows the safety of his sanctuary. Above him, three swords hang against a colored banner, while the fourth lies in readiness and within every a easy grasp of his hand, suggesting that at some point he will pick it up to battle once again. The four swords shows rest, recovery, and recharging batteries after a period of struggle, stress, or strain. You may feel slightly detached from outside events, experiencing a need to retreat inside yourself for comfort, or you may just feel too wary to participate for the moment. A period of rejuvenation is needed. Time to regroup one's resources before continuing onward again. Take some time out to replenish. This card can also indicate con convalescence. Hmm, I think there's more to it. I think maybe in certain spots is most of the the cities how about are the inner middle cities have they do they have less gravity in the inner middle earth cities okay one flip down three flipped up right this is on top temperance okay so temperance is um angel guidance um, some kind of higher guidance. It can be divine timing, mixing of cups, okay? Um, celebration. I think most or all of the cities have less gravity. And um, I think there could be a balance no matter where you go inside around there. Um, ah, I think there's some more of a balance, at least in the cities, okay? 
All right, so now. The movie Godzilla vs. Kong, if you've ever seen it, okay? I'm like, <laughs> I believe they put truth in a lot of our movies. It's like laughing in our face, like mocking, I believe. Um, again, all this information is for entertainment purposes only. Godzilla vs. Kong. Is that movie based off of Middle Earth as well? Is that movie based off of Middle Earth as well? You stay right there. Do not move. <laughs> um, we have Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is fantasy land. It is dreamy like. It is confusion. Uh, head in the clouds. Um, I got this with Journey to the Center of Earth as well. That it, it could be some kind of like dream. So the person that created Kong versus Godzilla, did they have a dream of Middle Earth? Did they have a dream of Middle Earth? The one who created Kong versus Godzilla. I got this with Journey to the Center of Earth as well. Did they have like a dream or vision of inner Middle Earth of this? Father of Cups. Very, very deep, deep emotions and feelings. Hmm. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. It could be very, very deep hidden feelings about this situation. I think they're treating it as a fantasy movie, but they know deep down, okay? Um, do massive crystals lay underneath these cities like it is said? Do massive crystals lay underneath these cities like it is said? No, I don't think so because we have a 10. 10 can be a no for me. This is 10 of swords, betrayal, 10 swords in the back. I don't think so. Um, is the Council of Twelve real? Whoa. We have two. We have a two of wands. This can be feeling stuck about taking an action. I think there could be... There could be possibly two, two different Council of Twelve. I want this guidebook. Determination and direction. With the two wands, it's clear you're on your way to success. You focus on a goal and have boldly pointed all efforts in that direction. Since the suit of wands deals heavily with the mind, take this time to become aware of your thought patterns, specifically towards yourself. What is the quality and tone of your thoughts, mostly positive or negative? How well do you treat yourself on the journey to your highest dreams? Hmm. Okay. Are, is there like two different councils of 12? Oh, we got an ace. Okay, I think there's at least two. Um, we have an ace, ace of pentacles, earthly, um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. There's a star in the middle of this um, um, log, wood, looks like earth. Aces is a yes. I think there's two councils of 12. Possibly in two different dimensions. Okay, is the Galactic Federation real? Galactic Federation, is that real? Son of Swords, wow. Swords can be truth, okay. Um, this owl is coming in down with the truth sword. He can be rash, he can be reckless, quick action. Um, I think, so, I think that my belief is that they're coming in and helping us. That's my belief, okay? Again, all this information is for entertainment purposes only. It says forceful and determined. We have more determination, okay? So a dynamic creature, the Son of Swords, is a man of action, not of grace. He pushes forward toward his goal with urgency and determination. To top it off, he's very well educated, making him a force to be reckoned with. Usually, he's seeking approval from the patient and just a father of swords, who casts quite a shadow onto his son. Working with this stimulating and exhausting, 
exhausting young man can prove to be a challenge. Hmm. Let's pull an oracle. Is this Galactic Federation real? Is this Galactic Federation real? Is this Galactic Federation real, please? Nothing. Switch decks. Halls of Amenti initiation. Secrets revealed, treasures uncovered, initiations. That's what I believe they are here for. I believe they're here to help us battle the these guys right here, okay? The dark ones, see that? Okay, the pyramid, okay? Again, all this information is for entertainment purposes only. This is my belief. I believe they are here to help us initiate secrets revealed, um, treasures uncovered, uncover our own treasures, etc. What is this? Freemasonry. Okay. Okay. Um, do these cities and houses connect to a spiritual computer system? Like it is said. Do these cities and houses connect to a spiritual computer system? Star being healing codes. Important information. Wounds are healed and recharging. What do you recharge? Computer systems, etc. Star being healing codes. Important information. Wounds are healed. Recharging. Yes. Yes. Wow, that is amazing. Okay, we're gonna put this back. I'm getting my new deck today, the White Light Oracle. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, we're almost done, you guys. <laughs> okay, are these beings people all very spiritual? Let's do Beyond Lemuria. Are all of these beings from Middle Earth very spiritual? Can it? Are all these beings people very spiritual? Woo! Mm -hmm. Crystal keys, number 22, that adds up to four. Home, family, structure, stability, justice. It's like her crown chakra is just Oh, wow. There's bubbles of like, it looks like um, mathematics or like a whole nother language, telepathy, um, downloading the crystals hold uh, information. Yes, they are very, very spiritual. Hidden wisdom codes, potent information, Lemur Lemurian seed crystals, senior triggers as a gift, awareness of drama, creating patterns, healing the earth by looking at your inner environment. Inner environment, okay? Healing through awareness. D let's read the divinatory meaning. Be inspired to find the wisdom hidden in those times when you feel triggered. There is so much information within our raw and intense reactions that when you choose to be present with what is coming up and peel back the layers, great spiritual insight will unveil itself in a way tailored just for you. If we could all learn to see our triggers in the bigger picture, so much confrontation and upset would be lessened. Power struggles and fear would diminish. Um... And we would see greater compassion across the planet. Perspective and misunderstanding would shift. And the way people want to be loved would be experienced without distortion. These are the seeds for peace on earth. Oh my God. Wow. That is amazing. Do these tubes that they say. That they use for travel down there. 
tubes, like trains, kind of like that. Are those real? Let's do Crystal Visions again. Do these tubes that they use for travel, do they really exist? Yes, we have the High Priestess. And the Hierophant, two major arcanas. High Priestess is number two, okay? Um, two can be possessions, finances, material things. The Hierophant is the number five, changes and challenges. The Hierophant, okay, the High Priestess, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. She is psychic. She holds the knowledge. She holds the key. She holds the information, the book of knowledge. She has um, abilities. She can channel, okay? She can see. She who sees doesn't speak sometimes, okay? And the Hierophant. The Hierophant is a guide, some kind of leader, some kind of guide. And uh, he holds the information and key to, and it's conformity rules establishments. He usually holds, it's the ink, it's the key to uh, life. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Do they... Do they have like a focus on health, barter, and free energy like it is said? Do they have a focus on health, barter, and free energy like it is said? Do they have their focus on health, barter, and free energy? We got a couple cards. We have the High Priestess again. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, number two. Material things, finances, earthly possessions. She who sees but doesn't speak. She downloads the information and the knowledge. She gets uploads, upgrades. She can channel, psychic. She holds the key, the information, the knowledge. She is getting free energy downloaded to her. And then we have the Five of Swords, which is kind of alienating those around them or winning at all cost, okay? And if you did focus on health, barter, free energy, you would win at all cost. Wow, that is amazing. Okay, um, is there a SSP, a secret space program, okay? Again, all this information is for entertainment purposes only. Let's do the Tarot of the Moon Garden. Is there really an SSP secret space program? Is there really an SSP secret space program? Yeah. We have four staffs, which is the four of wands. This is solid foundation and structure. Home, family, and justice. Yes. If more and more people just have an open mind, but you know what? This is a mass awakening. Okay? This is my belief. I believe people are waking up around the entire world. Okay? All right. If so, has it been around for a long time? That kind of answered that solid foundation and structure. Has it been around for a long time? Nine of staffs, which is the nine of wands, and seven of swords. Okay, so the nine of wands staffs is uh, taking an action to build up a wall to protect how far you've come. Yes, come on. And then um, the seven of swords is strategic, kind of hidden underneath the night, hiding, um, it has been around for a long time, but strategically, it could be sneakily. We are almost done. Mom. Almost done. After I do this, okay. Um, can they change dimensions? Let's do the Herb Crafters Tarot now. Can they change dimensions?
seven of air, which is the seven of swords. We just had that. Seven of air, seven of swords. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, energy. Air, words, communication. It's represented by eucalyptus. Strategically <laughs> unknown. Um, fox in the hen house. Uh, sneakily, sneaking around. Uh, it could be lie, cheat, thief. But this is strategically. Oh, yeah, they can. There's like this. Um, I want to read this out of guidebook. It's like this little um, little type of machine that probably drips um, oils or uh, steam or something from these this eucalyptus. So let's find the air seven of air. Okay, sevens are ancient trees initiation deeper journey, deeper journey. They can. Okay. And this one says, trust in reason. Do not be swayed by, by popular opinion. Be, uh, respond with integrity. A copper still sits next to piles of old aromatherapy books on a sunny table outside. Sunlight bounces over the scene. A warm breeze pushes eucalyptus leaves across the books. And the large eucalyptus tree nearby shudders with delight. Information is key to understanding. Trust in reason. Discern fact from feeling. When your assumptions are challenged, learn more before taking further action. Essential oils may provide quick relief, but are a resource intensive medicine. Hundreds of pounds of plant material are needed to make one ounce of oil. As botanicals desirable for their essential oils, such as eucalyptus, are planted, native species are pushed out devastating local ecosystems eucalyptus teaches us that what comes easily usually comes with a hidden cost see hidden the seven of swords hidden okay strategic sneaky um it is often said that the greatest enemy of learning is not ignorance but the illusion of knowledge distill information oh it's a distiller okay all right um information to the essence of clarity act ethically whether or not anyone knows just as a eucalyptus clears the lungs you'll breathe easy once again truth will give you direction yeah for sure okay now do they have spaceships um okay let's see we're gonna do the millennium thoth again and I do want to pull an oracle on that as well. Do they have spaceships? Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. We got the devil. That's Capricorn energy. That's earthly. Okay. It can be tangible things and material things. I believe so. There are two orbs with people in it. Doesn't always mean negative. Look at the picture. Yes, they do. Wow. Oh my gosh. Let's pull an oracle on that. Um, Let's do... Let's do the star seed oracle. Okay, go lay down and I'll come and help you. Um, we're very, very close. Thanks, honey. Okay, let's ask, do they have spaceships? Do they have spaceships? Big picture thinking. Pleiades energy, visionary, inspired ideas. And there's this like gateway and there's an underworld. Wow. Um, yeah, I think so. Let's get this guidebook. Where did I put it? Okay. Okay. Pleiades energy, visionary, inspired ideas. The Pleiadians are our cosmic cousins. 
They are here to remind us that it's never too late to learn new things and change the future. You're being called to be a visionary for the planet, to take a breath, shake off what you've been taught about the world, and hold a new vision for humanity. You're likely a natural big picture thinker, here to generate ideas for the future, here to birth a new age and dream a new big new world into being. The future will be woven by dream makers like you, by those with enough courage to question the way things have been and envision new possibilities for the planet. The world needs more artists, dreamers, inventors, and visionary thinkers. Perhaps you've had an idea recently that you're being called to usher in. If so, this card is your confirmation that it's divinely guided. The Pleiadians support us in an important stage in Earth's development. They want us to know that the decisions we take we make today will affect the well-being of our planet and all its species. Come on. That's why they're here. Come on. Oh my gosh. To hold a clear vision of what's possible, to trust that vision and follow it through with daily action, to dream a new world into being, to hold your mind open and try not to worry about what others think. For it takes great courage to pave a new path, to trust a vision before it's a reality. Okay. All right. Um, is there an ascension? I want to pull gateway of light activation. Is there an ascension we're supposed to be going through or on our way right now starting to? Is there an ascension? Is there an ascension? I'm a believer. Is there an ascension, please? Yes. We have serious star blessings. It says, yes, proceed, be seen, and push through. We just had the Lionsgate portal where the serious star is the brightest and closest to Earth. I think that was like the biggest push of it all. Okay, we only have three questions left. Are we going into 4D? Are we? Let's do tarot. Are we going into 4D, fourth dimension? Ascension. Is this ascension, are we going into 4D? That was weird. Are we going into 4D? Are we working our way into 4D? Try that again. Okay, maybe not. Holy crap. Okay, we have three of pentacles, and we have a, th a king of wands. Three of pentel pentacles is cooperation, commitment, contracts, teamwork. We are as a team, okay? And then king of wands is determination. This is a... De he takes action. There's an action being taken now to go together, and he always wins. He pushes forward. He's very action-oriented. So here's the three of pentacles. Yeah. 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 And here's the King of Wands. Okay. Um let's do another oracle for that. Are we going into 4D? I think we are together as a team. Are we going into fourth dimension? Are we ascending into fourth dimension? Are we ascending into fourth dimension? Wow. Loving compassion. It's a number uh, 16 that adds up to a seven, which is relationships, teamwork. But if we reduce that, six and one it would be a five is it 5d we are ascending into loving compassion let's read that one out of the guidebook real quick it's super short number 16. unconditional love empathy compassion care friendliness goodwill benevolence beyond duality safe space Forgiveness through expanded perspectives, open-hearted joy. Are we expanding, ascend, ascending into 5D? Are we 
ascending in a 5D. King of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, earthly, tangible, material things. He's the most financial, abundant king. Uh, he's about lineage, reliable, solid, knows a hard day's work. If we counted the king, if we put a number on him, it would go from the 10 to a page, which would be 11, to the knight, which would be a 12, to the queen, which would be a 13, to the king, which would be a 14. You add that together, you get a five. I think we're going in a 5D. I think we're going in a 5D. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Do the dark ones try to block this? I just seen justice. Okay. Do the dark ones try to block this for us? I, I'm pretty sure. Again, all this information is for entertainment purposes only. Do the dark ones try to block this for us? Or from us? Okay, we have a ten. Ten of wands. Ten can be a no, but the Ten of Wands is taking an action to put your burdens down to get a restart, a new beginning. Um, burdens. Are they trying to burden us? Let's ask if they're trying to burden us. They might not anymore. Were they trying to burden us? Were they trying to burden us? Okay, we have a six of cups. That's memories, childhood, childhood past, don't your past hold you back. Um, something or somebody you've known for a long time. Your roots, okay? I think they've been doing this for a very long time. I'm a big believer of this. Ever since before we were, we were even born. They're trying to keep us root bounded. Root bound, okay? Um, have they been stopped yet? Curious, curious. A queen of swords. Which is, this one is a mother of swords. Same thing, queen of swords. She's all about truth, balance, justice. She holds the truth sword. I think so. If not very close. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, now two more questions. Um... Are these people helping us to transcend? That's our last question, actually. Yeah. Are these people, beings, whatever, helping us to transcend? Ascend, transcend. Are they helping us ascending? Wow. Seven of swords. This is that strategically hidden it's not fully known to the public let's pull a beyond lemuria ask that same question and we're done are these beings helping us to transcend ascend Oh my gosh. We have one card flipped over. And it's freedom. Doing that is freedom. Dragonfly. Transformation. Transcending. Number 25 that adds up to a 7, which is relationships. There's eyes on the wings. Let's read that really quickly. And we will be done. This has been amazing. Creating heaven on earth by honoring the perfection of nature cycles, going beyond the judgment of good and bad, the merging of duality, raw nature, earth wisdom, connecting to ancestors, shadows as a fertile soil for exponential growth. The way forward is the whisperings of the land, honoring the full spectrum of life. 
divinatory meaning. Step out of the black and white mentality of judgment. Go beyond the concepts of good and bad. This card invites you to honor the full spectrum of life and find a new way of perceiving your situation. When we judge something, we create a story around it. These stories often create limitation. Subconsciously, we gather so many of these stories over a lifetime to heal our disease and crystallize the new way. We need to create a space of no story where miraculous healing can happen. This space empowers us to be all we are and allows us to know our truth. Embrace the full spectrum of creation in all her colors and the raw, muddy, earthbound. See, I was just talking about this earthbound. Okay. Um, shadow parts of a situation to determine whether they are actually bad or if stories you have held onto are limiting your perspective. Knowing our truth is freedom. Amazing. We have done it. This is the end of part three on Middle Earth. I hope you enjoyed. I hope um, you share your beliefs with me. Um, that's why I'm here. It's us awakened intuitives together. Okay. We are doing this together. Um, so I thank you so very much for being here. Please like, comment, subscribe. The truth is always stranger than fiction. Let me glow. Let you glow. And, um, again, all this information is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks guys. Lots of love and light to you. Unconditional love and light. Okay. So be it. So thank you so much. I'll see you in the next reading. Bye guys.